I told my boyfriend, you know what, I think this is it for me. I'm tired. So he was really supportive. More with me. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel with Life and In Between with Mrs. Anne. I'm so happy to be back in front of you guys and I'm also happy that you are back to watch me and hopefully this time we will be interacting a whole lot about the topic I'm about to discuss today. I'm actually excited because a lot of people could learn so much of it and if I had watched it also, I could have made some decision quite earlier in my life, especially in my career life, but this applies in what well, if it's your career, if it's a personal life. So here it goes, I'm just going to tell you about my experience in my workplace and actually just generally in life let me just not uh close it off just like that so just personally i'm going to speak about self-worth and living toxic environments so i've just got career examples but I, I know this will just give you an idea of how to implement it in your life there is any situation that you come across um and also guys please don't forget before i start i want i want i would like to actually emphasize that to you guys please interact on the comment section so i would like to hear your stories and i know someone would actually learn a lot from what you would say and maybe advise each other actually yeah <laughs> that would actually help so i'm just going to say a couple of things that made me realize my worth and how i reacted towards them so um early in my career i as i mentioned on my first video if you actually haven't watched my first video, please go. I give a summary of my life. And um, from that summary, I'll actually be having co um, a couple of episodes that I mentioned. And I just refer back from the incidents that happened previously where I just summarized. So I'll just go deeper into them. So please go watch, uh, like, subscribe, and put on those notifications. So here it goes. Um, I started my career. Uh, as an intern uh, in this company, I didn't spend much um, much time there. I just spent a couple of months and I moved to another company because I wanted to venture into another field, which is supply chain. I was first in production. Then it was not really my thing. Then I moved to supply chain. So moving to supply chain was a new setting. Unfortunately, when I moved there, I was actually just a number. No one really wanted my ideas. I was just sitting there being told, do this, do that. I didn't have a say or anything. That was fine with me as long as I was gaining experience and actually getting paid for it, which was really nice. And it was like my first real job, I must say, because the first internship, I didn't really quite complete it. I stayed a couple of months from June, July, August. So it was about three months and our internship at school is about six months. So I left that three months um, uncompleted and I ventured into this new supply chain. Also that I took a decision what I really wanted because at the uh, first internship, my manager was really good. Um, we got along very well. And guess what? We actually shared a birthday. So we had something special to share together. But unfortunately, I had to choose me. So here I am living the company, living good terms. And I'm going to this other company uh, because I want to venture into supply chain. The first of all, the salary was not really good, but I had to take it as an internship. I don't have something to compare it to. So yeah, I do take my couple of thousands. Uh, I run with them and um, towards my, I, I really learned a lot. Uh, things I did not even have an idea of that. How do I get things in the shelf? It was actually one of the companies that bring in merchandise for all our clothing shops uh so it was more like importing and transportation so you would buy your true edge clothes it's actually a manufacturing company um that that is imported so i worked with that it was quite an eye opener and um with that being said it also made me want to stop focusing on wearing brands because i had to see the real value of clothes before the markups before the labels before the everything then i learned that if if you want to be happy in life, I actually put, took that personal decision to just buy what I like and not actually base it on this is um, this is so-and-so brand. If it's really good, but I must tell you, there are really good brands that offer really great quality. Also depends, but um, it also taught me that to not value brands, but actually buy whatever quality of our brands. Uh, so in this company, I learned a lot in the shortest uh, space of time and i was quite happy 
towards my towards my graduation that means um to actually towards my internship to end of the internship which is six months i was told by the company okay um you've completed six months uh your internship you're going to get your qualification so we're still deciding if you want to keep you or not uh mind you i really wanted to be kept because if i was told we are okay with you then i wouldn't have a job so anxiety went on um, my internship ended in february and my graduation was in march so after in february they renewed my contract for one month on t on, on the on the internship basis so uh with that being said i was an intern for an extra month march came and on the day of my graduation it was actually month end so the 31st of march the company hasn't said anything to me so just surprised what am i going to do what does this mean i'm actually even scared to ask them are you taking me in case if if they are not taking me then i'll be heartbroken all of that all the stresses so i just let it flow on the day of my graduation which may, would mean the end of my contract day as well um I just packed all of my stuff from my desk because if they didn't say anything by the end of the day, then that would obviously mean that I'm unemployed. Um, I'd have to search for another job. So on the day of my graduation, my manager at the time, uh, she was a very nice lady. She she was fair enough. And so she called me and she told me, uh, they're keeping me. I'm going to be employed permanently now. I was quite happy. And looking forward to have my permanent contract on a Monday. So I graduated on a Friday and the contract came in on a Monday morning. And pretty much it was the same. Uh, I was quite disappointed because I had accepted the value of money that I had because I said I have no experience. I'm not a, good, I'm not a graduate, so I'm just going to take whatever they offer me. So there it is now. The contract is it, it is what it is. And I'm frustrated. I can't even say I'm frustrated because I already have financial commitments and mentally I would already said um, I'm going to do this, do that, do this, do that. So uh, I took in the job and um, after taking the job, I stayed for, for, for two more years in the company. I was really working hard and unfortunately during the working hard, it was over working hard to a point that I'd start work at eight and it was an eight to five job. So I'd start work at eight and knock off at five. Funny enough, uh, the demands would go up and we'd eventually leave work around nine at, 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 home, at work, 9 p.m. in the evening. And there's no overtime payment and the compensation was actually 60 rands for dinner, of which there was a nice Burger King down the road would get really nice small meals value meals but um after three or four overtime meals and you thinking to yourself this is not really working out so i realized that i was putting in a whole lot of effort and they were not willing to give out more for me so um during that time i was really frustrated with myself as i was applying but i was not really sure if i really want to leave or should I voice out what I wanted so eventually I managed to gather spirits and ask for a raise um, but asking for a raise I did mention my expenses my living expenses all of that all of that that it's not really working out I'm actually living hand to mouth and there's practically no savings or any extra living benefits you actually I literally enjoyed my salary the first week of payment after that, I was actually literally broke and actually didn't have a social life because I was constantly working. Lucky enough, I was not working weekends, but during the week, I'd knock off at around um, nine, eight, you know, those were my normal hours. And yes, they would drop us off in the 60 rand, but it was not really working out. I was overusing myself. I was getting to burn out. I was frustrated. I was demotivated. I felt like my qualification did not have value at all. Like, why did I even have, why did I even study if this is what I really studied for? This was not part of the plan. I never thought this was going to turn out like this. And I kept on wondering a lot of things. I Could have I made incorrect career um decisions should have i studied something else you know i started having those questions and it slowly slowly frustrated me so until this one moment it was flat out 
it was peak in our in our company and we were literally go getting home at nine almost every day mind you i wake up quite early to catch up with the traffic with cape town most of the sub suburbs there they actually meet up with the national road and there's a huge traffic jam so you really have to wake up like two hours before start time so you have to leave the house i meant leave the house two hours before the work starts so i would wake up around five to five and get at work at eight and come back at work at nine so that was really draining although yes i was living alone and everything everything but i really needed a breather and to just have a relaxing time so with that being happening uh for a whole full week eventually uh at the time i told my boyfriend you know what i think this is it for me i'm tired so he was really supportive, more especially wanted it to come down from me and actually really understand what I want and know that what's my next plan after if I'm going to do what I'm going to do. So I am. Uh, so the bonuses in the company I was at were split. The first bonus, uh, the actually the bonus was accumulated from the rest of the year, but pay, paid out in splits. So the first split would be in December. So in December, you'd get the first split and the second split would be in march that's like three months apart but the catch is if you resign before march you forfeit your percentage your march percentage that's like more like 50 percent i don't really remember the the value but i do remember that um i sat down and i told myself you know what this is it for me i'm going to resign and i don't care how much i'm losing out i'm definitely sure that the next job that i'm going to get which is what i deserve i'm going to actually earn more than the bonus that i was due to have including the amount that i was getting paid monthly so i sat down frustrated so then um eventually i was actually not even willing to write his resignation letter i wanted to do it verbally but uh, professionally you know you have to hand in your resignation formally as you did formally get employed so i formally wrote down my letter in the evening just after coming back from the one of my long hours so i drafted the resignation letter the following morning gave it to my operations manager uh she was not really surprised um of me leaving but she had to do her job uh, which convinced me to stay and um offer me a little bit more so those discussions may happened and I actually realized even if they offered me more, I was actually worth more than they offering me. Yes, it was a huge difference from what I was actually getting at the, t at the time at the company, but it was not market related. So I had to understand that I could get more from them, how much more where I'm really valued for the experience and the qualification I have as an, as an, as a career person. So I decided to turn down all the offers. I made an offer to um, pay my curation fee. I turned it down. And that's when I realized, you know what? I feel so uplifted. I feel so powerful. I feel so much value. I, I feel like I can do anything. I can be anything. Only if I put my mind up to it. So I gracefully uh, served my notice while job hunting. And um, it came to an end. And before I know it, um, it was March. It was end of um, end of March. My last month actually was the month where I was supposed to get the bonus. Then I left then, and I forfeited my bonus, which I never even challenged. I was not. I was. J I just had enough. I did not even care what they wanted or what I was willing. Even if they said they were going to deduct for my salary, that's how much I wanted to be out of the company. So I saved gracefully, resigned and did my relocation as mentioned from my previous video. I came to back from Tata and I got my job in Port Elizabeth. Um, and I, as I've mentioned previously, I resigned in Port Elizabeth because of studying a family and I moved in East London. And while I was job hunting, um, I got an interview with a with another company that I've been eyeing for a couple of months. Eventually, they gave me the opportunity to, to interview on my way from the interview this is the second example of knowing Remember your i said on my birthday i had an interview for the current position that i'm in so on my way uh from my interview actually that's a good one 
I get this call. It's an agency. It's a recruitment. It's a recruitment agency. This agent tells me about this job opportunity. It's a managerial or supervisor role. So I'm like, yes, I'm interested. So she goes about. I'm going to email you the details and blah blah blah. So she, she I'm excited now. I'm from an interview, I'm getting another job on the on the horizon. So uh, I get home. The interview comes in. Um, the responsibilities are quite big. They're exciting, and it's actually a role I was not looking into it for like for the next two years, I suppose, because it was a an advanced role. So I'm excited. If it, I always believe in if something, so if you're recognized for something, then there is something that you can offer. If they pick me up and they said they wanted me to do this role, definitely I'm worth to do that role. So I told myself I'm gonna wear the shoes even if they big. I'm gonna land on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so this job it's great the the position is great so everything is great everything i'm just happy about it so i get back to her happy about the job spec uh, what happens next i i'd love to uh, to show my interest in it so she says um no problem we can organize an interview i go to this interview it was great i really actually i actually nailed it it was really so good I nailed it. I was actually so happy. So it gets down to the money talk. So the money was not even what I, the amount I got when I got permanent. It was actually around about the same amount for my internship. Actually, it's just a little bit above the internship, but the fact is there was not much difference and I, I was actually way adva financially advanced and my commitments were actually way bigger than what she was offering me. And my value, definitely not. And for the requirements of me, definitely not matching up. So I sat down and I thought to myself, this is a great opportunity. What if I really take it? And then um, my next role that's going to be offered to me, it's going to be a managerial role. So I'm never looking back after this role. Let me just take it and run with it. Um, mind you, they even mentioned that you have to have your own transport with that being said. So I said, I'll make, um, I'll make a sacrifice. Let me just take this one. So I'm thinking that I told, th thought to myself, really, do I really want this? Is this what I'm worth? And is this what I deserve? So I said, no, if I could wait up a little bit, a, a little bit more, you know, um, I was planning to, to make such moves in the next two to three years. I didn't have to rush it. And they would come just at the right about the right time and come with the right packs. So I decided to myself, this is, I, I, I can't do this. It's not worth it for me. And my self-worth, I would be overutilizing myself for something that it's not even going to work out best for me. So I gathered my strength and I told the, uh, the recruiter, um, I'm really thankful for the opportunity and it would have turned out really great had it had it matched up with the salary. Actually, the roles and responsibilities, they don't match up with the salary on offer. So I'd like to withdraw my, my interest. Well, she, she, she was shocked that I was actually rejecting a job when I said I was available immediately, which means I'm unemployed, obviously. So she convinced me of this experience. It's a great experience. It's going to work out perfectly for you. And then I asked, what is it for me if I'm going to accept this? Except for great experience. Because I'll tell you what is it for the company if they get me at this value. So um, it was a lot of back and forth. But I have already made up my mind. If there's no negotiation on table on the salary, then I'm not taking it. It was actually quite a loss for me because I would be using my personal resources my time for my family i'd rather sp I, I i preferred i would rather spend more time with my family than sacrifice the, to have this job while i was actually planning to actually take a jump after a, another opportunity shows up so that was that i eventually said no thank you i really appreciate it but i will not be taking the position and i was very upfront about it and and very confident to say what I was worth and how much I would have expected for the position that they were given. So it was just that and that was it. Um, and I was quite happy. I was, I did not feel really bad that I, I made a loss. In fact, you can't feel that you've lost something you actually did not have. You know, 
I, I would understand if I was employed and then I lost this job. I don't know. I do not have this job. I have to make decision if I wanted to be in that position in life. So it was not really, I did not come across as a loss to me. I just felt like i uh, motivated that my uh, my CV is getting attention and that uh, there are um, managerial or senior roles that um, I could actually quite fit into um, all in the right time. So I did make that decision that not now. I will get to that point, but not now. I don't have to overstretch myself to get to that point. And also understand that I don't have to sacrifice myself because someone is giving me an opportunity that they feel it was it will be best for me than me actually feeling the same about that offer. So there it is. I uh, I didn't take the offer. I went home the following day. Um, the company I had the interview with um, previously, they called me and they wanted to hire me. As I mentioned, it's been a position that I was looking into. It was also a great position and advancement in my career. So it was actually just the right um, offer that I needed at the time that I was getting it and at the right value. And I was actually honored to say yes to the position. And um, there it is, guys. Um, always understand what you want and what you need and always um, evaluate how far something is going to get you and be very truthful to yourself be honest and always don't always feel like what's offered to you is what you must take i know the the employment pool is quite tight but what's meant for you will always find you locate you at no much effort Trust me, when it's yours, you will feel it inside and you will work for it and you will get to it and you will, it will feel right. No doubts, no hesitations, no, I feel like I had to give up to get, you will, it will be just the perfect fit. So know your worth and in anything in life, know your worth and know when to leave the toxic environment. Know when it's the time to actually pack up and say, this is it for me, I am leaving and never be scared to actually start over starting over is far more better than walking 100 100 kilometers only to turn back than actually turning back at 20 kilometers when you had just realized this is not working out for you so i'm happy to share this with you and if you have a similar experience or would like to share your own experience or whatever comments that you have please do on the comment section i'll be there to respond and hopefully um, there'll be something to discuss about um, thank you and please don't forget to subscribe i will be seeing you next time on my next episode i don't have i don't have a topic but it will come in mind when it comes to mind i will be ha definitely having my video and videoizing myself and we can actually again meet up on the comment section and please don't forget to like Thank you so much. Bye-bye.